me thank everyone here and in the world for watching, for being here to witness this historic event because everything that happens at the Charles Wright gets documented as history. This is hist a historical event. This is documented, you are documented. Mr. Dick Gregory is documented. I picked Dick Gregory up from the airport this afternoon and Cheryl came with me. And she says, well, he just probably has a carry-on. So I said, okay. And he had his carry-on. And then he says, I said, you have any baggage? He says, oh, yeah. So go to the baggage. He had this big bag, this big, and then two smaller. He said, it's my research. <laughs> he said, I don't think I do the research. He'll tell you. I'm not going to, well, I, that's, anyway, he'll tell you everything. <laughs> y'all sit with all this crap bullshit been passed down from your mama and your daddy and all that craziness, huh? When I moved to Plymouth, Massachusetts, serious rich white folk. No, serious rich white folk. <laughs> My neighbor crossed the pond. <coughs> Steinway piano air. Hmm? Up the hill, ocean spray. Hmm? Serious white folks. Yeah. And what I can't understand about you white folks, I swear to you. See, I've been through all the movements. I look, I know King, King would never say nothing, but we got to love him. And when the cameras leave, call you a honky. I will. <laughs> he wouldn't. But I will. Call you a honky, 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 honky. <laughs> Here's how white folks think about you when you're honest. One thousand and one people who made America. One thousand and one. And this go all the way back before the Mayflower. I'm listed in it. Are you? Huh? All y'all that be bullshitting white folks enough. Are you listed in here? Okay, that's the game they play. Y'all in this old foggy game. You follow me? 98% of my audience is white folks. That's why I love to come back here to see y'all. I will never live in the ghetto. But I come back because y'all in the ghetto made me. You listened to me when I wasn't funny. And when you got through listening to me, you pushed me all downtown where you couldn't afford to see me. So I'd like to come back. But I'm not living there. <laughs> Understand that. Hmm. I'm listed in the phone book, don't have nobody going. That's because of you all. Y'all made me, huh? Ten children went to the best colleges in the world. Y'all did that, huh? And I got to come back, not in some nightclub, on the front line. I'm willing to die for you for what you did for me. Hmm. My children lived a lovely life for what you did for me. Huh? Oh, they told you how happy my wife. Ain't no one to be happy when big dollars coming in. <laughs> but I spent mine. Hmm? You know that big mansion I was in? 400 acres. My house in Massachusetts was bigger than the Kennedy's. Hmm? They'd come by there and just look at it like, you could put the Kennedy compound in my land a hundred times. And I went to Iran, because I know there was a CIA operation. They wanted to kill them folks so they could wipe them off the map. And I went over there and fasted for 90 days. When I come back, here's the white folks met me. Uh, Mr. Gregory, it's a lovely thing you're doing. <laughs> But you know that Rolls Royce is ours. You haven't paid on it in three months. Now let me just tell you, you brilliant. People love you, entertainment. All you got to do is stop doing that mess and take care of you. I said, let me tell you something, white boy. No jive used car tell, gonna tell a nigga with my statue, take that damn Rolls Royce. Huh, take it. 
Now he get real mad now because he wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> so I said, let's take it now. Hmm? So the next day, the guy from Boston that owned the franchise, sometimes they think niggas don't hear. He says, Mr. Gregory, I just, we just love you, what you're doing for the whole world. He said, but you know, I know you didn't mean to send that Rolls Royce back just to them. I said, yes, I did. He said, well, you know you still have to pay that $2,500 note. I said, I know that. Now get off my land. And I paid every nickel on that Rolls Royce to teach a human being there's something more to dignity than just some damn car. Okay? Now, the Rolls Royce people are so scared, they came in from London. Come by to see me. Oh, Mr. Greg, I just, uh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, uh, we'd like to give you a Rolls Royce for the rest of your life. No, that's what happens when you stand up and be something other than a damn dog or a football player. Huh? But y'all don't understand that. Because the glamour is on a nigga trying to outrun God every day than somebody in this audience. I know who you are. It's liberating folks. Hmm? So they got the Rolls Royce back. Then I lost the farm. Hmm? But you, you take niggas with money. Oh, you just can't come take the house. Oh, no. If I'm leasing your house, hmm? and I can't pay you the money, all I got to do is go bankrupt. Do you know you can't touch that house? And you my friend. I ain't got to do with no friend when you about to get my house. You, know? <laughs> you hear me? So what happened is, I gave them the house. But they had to go through federal court. See, I live in Massachusetts, Commonwealth. Come on here. Commonwealth. Commonwealth. You know what it means? It means that the state is there for the commonwealth of the people, and you can't come in and repossess that house. You got to go through the state, and that took two years. And then they came and got it. <laughs> We've been living there two years and ain't paid a damn note. My wife crying. I said, are you crazy? We've been living in this 400 mansion. It ain't paid no money. You got nothing up to cry. Come on, let's go back to the hotel and talk about this shit. <laughs> See how it works? It's about a universal order. Hmm? And you women paying a price because you so unspiritual, ungodly, you let a bunch of evil ass men do anything they want. And I'm not talking about rape. I'm talking about all the other stuff. Huh? You walk down the street and there's a big steel thing called a manhole. Well, where's the woman hole? Hmm? I meant to tell you, man, there's a, a Nabisco at St. Louis. We fixing to buy that, man. The Bisco. I'd be the first nigga on the planet making crackers. <laughs> and I'm gonna invite my man and this lady that came down here and let you know what a cracker tastes like. See how it works. Y'all get home, black women, you've been lied to. These niggas come home and tell you what they said to the boss. They ain't said a damn thing. <laughs> and white folks, you got to learn one day why niggas don't come to work on time. The later I get to work, the longer I keep my manhood, and the earlier I get out of there, the quicker I get it back. That's what that shit's about. The strongest two forces, and those of you that follow me, no, I don't just say this to black women. The strongest two forces in the history of the planet is the black woman and the black church. Hmm? You know something? Do you know, black woman, you're the only person on this planet that can take a butter knife and cut that nigga's ties to the rim? <laughs> I'm not talking about no bazooka. 
I'm not talking about no razor blade, a butter knife that can't even cut butter. And you cut that nigga's ties to the rim, and them white folk gave that tie a 20 year guarantee. Not when I make you mad. And all you asked is who is Melba? You can't get me without going to Dick Gregory's wife. She's always running everything. All the millions of dollars, I, mean, I never had a check in the account in my life. And when we brothers find out who you all are, whew. so when I moved out to this rich neighborhood, Plymouth Mass, I said to my wife, she just had her 10th baby. Week later, we was in the big trucks with all the furniture, head to the Plymouth. And I tried to ease her for the blow. I said, no. Nah. But at that time, Massachusetts public schools was better than most states' private schools. That's not true, no. Hmm? And so I said to her, I said, I want you to hear me good, dear. I said, there's children being in school next week. When school started. See, I always found something funny, miss. You have children? So if you don't have your children in school by a certain age, that's a truancy law that put you in jail. But if three of the five children starve to death, they don't put you in jail, they just put the other two in a foster home. So that seems kind of funny. You get more time, huh, for not sending your child to school than if they die. So I never trusted that, but I couldn't do nothing about it because my mama was mushed up enough. If my mother was alive now, this shit, I'd be saying she'd call the police on me. <laughs> yeah. And that's one thing you mothers, well, you did it to shield us during slavery. And y'all did it well. Slave master come to get your son. Say, that nigga just like his daddy. No good. Whatever you say he did, he did. Give me that two by four, I'll kill this nigga myself. That's where whoopings came from. You ain't never supposed to hear the child. And all that stuff, you get out of the Bible, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's the story of a shepherd boy and that stick he holds. Because the more they walk, the better they fur is. And so when they get too close to the ledge, he just holds the rod out. And you all ignorant, crazy folk that took that to whooping a child. Hmm? Whooping a child. You wouldn't hit your cat like <laughs> well, here that damn fool up in Minnesota, was his name Peterson? Went there and whooped his son. Now, wait a minute. Stuck leaves in his mouth? Boy, you know what that's going to help if they play it right? They'll get the biggest salmon out of the National Football League. So, you know, these blows in my head made me stuff tree leaves in my son's mouth. <laughs> and some ignorant white judge just say, Did you cook them? And then I hear this old ignorant dog, Charles Barkley. Y'all buy that crap. No reason white folk let him be analyzing the games, because he know he ain't going to say nothing that's going to be derogatory to nobody but black folk. Do you know what he said about Peterson? Say, said, well, y'all, most of you white folk don't understand. That's a Southern tradition. So I got on the radio and said what he said, and I said, so was lynching. We stopped that. See how it works? And so, so consequently, like I said, I'm so glad I'm 82. <laughs> My wife's 75. We don't have a prescription between the two of us. Hmm? Huh? So I want to know what God you black folks play. Your knees, ankles all swole, can't breathe, got everything you can have. Who you praying to? God is real. Every tree on this planet, God made. So we're not dealing with just one kneecap. Huh? What is this about? Y'all scared of God? That's a violation. Huh? Do you know? Do you pray, brother? I'm just asking. Okay, not that I care. Okay. Well, I got some nigga friends. I ain't never prayed. 
He gave more money than me. I look up and wink. But you know if you pray for something tonight, you're not supposed to pray for the same thing the next day. You know that. That's a violation. Huh? That God is so powerful. You know if you ask for it, you're going to get it. So from that point on, you're in a prayer of thanksgiving. Because you know you're going to get it. Huh? Just like that. Huh? I mean, some of y'all sitting here, your house is being foreclosed on. You're going to pray to God. What God do you know that put the whole unit that didn't know they're fixing to take your house? So I just look at God and say, hey, champ, you know what they're going to do? Check it out. Waste my time telling God what they're doing like he don't know? Huh? Please. I got some questions if I ever see God, I got to ask it. Say, I travel all over the world. I was born and raised in St. Louis. It's Tornado out. They have tornadoes, tornadoes, tornadoes. The big old Catholic church got blew away. Huh? but never the whole house. Talk to me, God. What is it about them hoes? I ain't never turned on TV after an earthquake or a tornado and hear the hoes on the corner cry. I don't know what my panties are. It just blew away. Old folks' home burned down. Red Cross burned down. Never. You ain't never heard nobody in the crack house looking for their crack. It's right there where it was before the tornado came through. So if something happened here tonight, huh? I got a lot of preacher friends. I understand God. If I leave here and they say, tornado, I'm going over to that gambling casino. They don't get messed with. And if there's a whole house close, I'm going to straddle both of them. <laughs> How many of y'all in here remember when the government gave me the worst form of cancer you could have? I mean, okay. So, I accidentally found it out. My son's a doctor. And I went by to have these hernias checked I've had since I was a little boy. And here's how the universe works. The x-ray machine malfunctioned. So I said, okay, we're in the hospital, don't cost nothing. Let me give you an MRI. Hmm? They give me an MRI. It's my son. He's looking here. Okay. I went through the whole machine. He's looking here and he said, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Two weeks later, the folks that manufactured the machine came through the hospital. I said, I understand Dick Gregory was in here. Yeah. He said, can we see the pictures? Yeah. They found it because they was looking at the whole picture. I said, my God, how long has he had this cancer? Whew. So they called my son. My son called me. Dad, you better get over here quick. I thought he told me that. I said, son, let me tell you something. The day we took those pictures, I just finished walking 10 miles in Rock Creek Park. So whatever that was, they didn't extend for me to find it. And it would get worse and worse and worse. I said, you take these damn pictures and send it to the Armed Force Institute of Pathology and don't put my name on it. And they sent back and they said, wow, the only way you could get something like this is work in a nuclear plant. Have I ever been in a nuclear plant? Do nobody own nuclear plants but the government? So if I don't own a nuclear plant and the government, it's, it's obvious the nuclear plant came to me. So now I can go out in the backyard and pray to God a real prayer. And here's how it went. Hey, champ, I know there's a lot of niggas that deserve cancer, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> I know there's a busy job up there in heaven. You got a whole lot of things to do. Why don't you get you some help? <laughs> and so I said, I thank you if you Take care of this immediately. Then I looked at me and said, Cancer, I'm going to give you 72 hours to get out of my body. This is my body. Huh? Y'all scared of cancer? Make cancer scared of you. Huh? I can create another human being. Cancer, you can't. 
72 hours later, the Joe Madison show. I had told him, and he said on the show, that a white dude called me from Orlando. He said, Mr. Gregory, Joe called me. I heard him on the show. He said, there's some water in El Salvador. You can go down there, and in five days, whatever's in your body is gone. Hmm? Well, I ain't going to ask no stupid questions. I said to God, I know that's God doing it. Huh? God doing it. Huh? So I go down first. I go, no, I was really tricky. I went to Howard University Hospital first, you know. Well, see, I can't be telling white folks, hire black, hire black, and I go to a white. So I went to Howard first. <laughs> the doctor came and said, this is, this is awful. I said, well, let me tell you what we need to do. I can go in there, and, but I got to take two of your ribs out, and there's a possibility you'd be paralyzed the rest of your life. I said, Doc, when you mentioned ribs and wasn't talking about the barbecue hut, I wasn't even thinking about coming in. <laughs> so Steve Jackson, you see, his daddy invented nuclear medicine at Cedar Design. He's retired, so my son sent it to Steve, our friend. He sent it to Dad. Dad called up crying like a baby. He said, How come we didn't know this early? I said, I just found out about it. Hmm? Well, I just like when you come out here, because what I'm looking at is nothing can be done. Yeah, nothing can be done. That's why I left y'all. <laughs> it went to the real. Hmm? He just said, you know, there are some niggas out there that deserve it. Look, I'm not one of them. In case you're in a hurry, I can get you a list of 12 of them. <laughs> and if you need something close to the house, I can do that too. But all them niggas in my house, I ain't never played like I like. You know what I mean? But some of y'all sitting there got you and you don't like it. You just scared to say you don't like it. Some of y'all sitting out there would never talk to God honestly. You think you got to get into some pimp prayer. Hmm? That's your mother and father. Huh? I don't have to go clean up before I go home. Huh? Fix it, boss. So I go out there and, and one of the great doctors on the planet is a black guy named Keith Black. See the sign on Punch him up. Them white folk come in from all over the world to see Keith. So I go there and he said, well, I guess we can try. i never seen nothing like this. He said, well, I said, I'll do it after Christmas the holiday. I went down to go come back the first week of January, show them the kids. He started crying. <laughs> Where did you go? Don't even ask me that. Because you know what I'm going to tell you. Prayer. Y'all wouldn't even understand that shit. Prayer. Hmm? He said, well, all I can tell you, we need to close this hospital down and follow you. Hmm? Yeah. Now, y'all know I'm vegetarian in the hell. Y'all know that, right? But let me set the record straight. If I leave here tonight, driving to the hotel and a drunken truck driver hit the car I'm in and I'm laying there with my head cracked, my ear missing, my jaw broke, feet missing. Do not carry me to a health food store. Take me to that old, nasty, dirty hospital where they used to trauma. Hmm. Take me there. Hmm. Let this pain stop. Hmm. I'm over there, they, they're talking about me some, 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 some blueberries. Hmm. I say, now that that old hospital that don't know nothing with heavy drugs and all that stuff, now when I'm fixed, now y'all bring me that African yak juice. <laughs> all you got to do is be honest. Hmm? Be honest with yourself. And so I talked to Bill today, and I said, Bill, yeah, I don't know if it's true or not, that's a police job. I'm calling you about them ugly white women. <laughs> That's what I'm calling about. You my man, man. I don't know what you do in life. But I thought you would elevate your shit. <laughs> and they don't. They come back and don't even know it's past the limitation. They can't get nothing out of this. That's why I think it's a plan. Remember when his son was killed? Let me show you how dumb y'all are. You remember his son was killed? He was on the highway, right? Do you know any robber dumb enough 
They're going to rob a nigga in his car doing 75 miles an hour. It's just like I was born before there was television. You know how stupid Americans had to be to look at a tap dancer on the radio? <laughs> and ain't nothing changed. Y'all just as stupid. You ever been to Victoria's Secret, miss? Victoria's Secret? Have you asked where you buy your drawers? Why is it a secret? You should ask that before you go back. Huh? It's a secret because Queen Victoria was a man. How many of y'all knew that? Okay? That's why it's a secret. If I'm a man posing as a queen, I've got to wear women's drawers. That's what the secret is about. And you older folks, you remember that King Cole? Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. Do you know they just found out 15 years ago that that was Da Vinci? He was a drag queen. How many of y'all knew that? How many of y'all knew that? Huh? I don't see. Yeah, you knew it, huh? See that? He was a drag queen. And, and Nat Cole didn't know he sang to a man. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa. <laughs> Talk to Obama every now and then. We ain't good friends, but he ain't black enough for me. I'm fixing to open up a black airline, and I'm not going to be like most black folks. You know this is a black line. Airline is going to be named Tamika Air. And my motto, we leave late, but we get you there on time. Dick Gregory, Patience, Part 4. Don't miss it.